Hey there, it's Ruben Tena, your IL coach, and today we are going to talk about something that we should be doing but often struggle to find the time for. Reading. I think it's like eating healthy food. We know that it's good for us, that it's the best for us, but we often choose not to do it, using the excuse that we are too busy, that we don't have time, that we wish that we can do it. So take Bill Gates as an example. He reads around 50 books per year. That's roughly like one book uh, per week. So maybe I know that what you will think, right? So he has the luxury of the time because he is a billionaire, but maybe uh, we can say the opposite. So probably his reading habit is what supported his success. That made me think. So that's why today I'm going to share with you Reading 2.0. That's how I call my framework, my personal framework that helped me finally conquer the reading habit. No shame, no guilt, I read more, right? So using this framework, I was able to tackle more than 35 books last year. Still not in the Bill Gates level, but I'm on my way. So I'm confident that this will help you to do the same for sure. So reading 2.0 uh, consists on four components that will help you to first simplify your decision making. Should I read this or should I not? Second is how to access your books in a convenient way. Third, how to manage the wisdom nuggets, the lesson learned that you get from the book. And finally, where to find time for doing this new habit. So, Let's do a deep dive into each of these components and see how you can start reading more. But the most important thing is how you can extract the most value from the books that you read. Let's start with the first component that is about decision making. I choose to follow three principles. Principle number one, never question spending on books. The main idea here is to completely remove the friction for reading. You cannot read a book that you don't have. Simple as that. So when someone recommends a book to me, I just buy it. That's it. Education is an area that we should never limit ourselves, and most of the books are quite affordable. Principle number two, learn one thing and that's enough. After reading a book, if I have learned only one thing and enjoyed the content, that's great. That's enough uh, for me. A lot of people feel the pressure to implement everything that they read in a book, that if you already invest the time and the money on this book, I should, I must get a lot of value from it. Don't get me wrong. If you find a book valuable, yes, spend all the time and effort of, of, or get as much as value as you want from it. But if not, Go with the mentality that if you learn only one thing and you learn and uh, you read 35 books in a single year, then it's a win-win scenario, okay? And principle number three, it's okay to say, no, no, to abandon a book. So if you, when you start reading a book and you find that it's too boring or useless, so I just stop reading it and move to the next thing without any guilt, without any feel of sadness that I spent uh, on it. So uh, a lot of times you can even return uh, the book and it's possible to get your money back or exchange it for another one. So life is too short to waste time on uninspiring reads and sometimes even finishing a book uh, doesn't provide any value. So even after you read all of them and you, you, you have the feeling, eh, meh, but that's okay. So... There you have it, my three reading principles. Keep them in mind to help you to get the most of the books and also to help you to enjoy the process. That's the key. So now that we covered the first part of the Reading 2.0 framework, let's move on the second part, where to get the books and how to consume them. The strategy here is to make it as easy as possible for you. So I like to start with audiobooks, then ebooks, and frequently combine the two to, to make the ultimate learning experience. So let's talk about that. So my platform for choice for audiobooks is Audible, right? So that's uh, the place where I found the biggest 
audiobook library and they have pretty much everything and in different languages, right? So I like to read in both in English and Spanish. So following my first principle of never questioning about spending on books, I purchased at the beginning of the year the Plus membership. That enabled me to download uh, 24 uh, books per year. So I already have it, I already purchased it, and I just need to select what will be my next read or Insta buy. So the last two recommendations that I received was the book called, a book called Who Moved My Cheese? Really good a story. And The Age of Agile. Both of them highly recommended and I will put the links on the description. Uh, Audible normally has like this free trial where you can download one book for free. So please uh, try it out and give it a shot. Audiobooks are the easiest way to access the books because they give you the freedom to consume them pretty much uh, whenever you have time in any place. But some of the books are just not available in an audio form. So for those, I choose uh, same company, so Amazon company. I use uh, Kindle uh, for eBooks. This allows me to have the book in my phone, in my tablet, in, in my computer, pretty much in every place. And while I'm reading, I can highlight, I can uh, do notes and so on. I try too many times to use like physical books. I think I have one uh, here. Uh, looks good, but for me are not like practical enough. So you forget it, then you will not advance on it. And then you need to find the time and the space and having the book at the same time in order to take advantage of it at that simple simply uh, didn't work for me. If that's your thing, I think it's okay. But the real game changer is a tier, a tier tool or service that I use and it's an application that I have in my phone, Khaled and Voice Dream. This powerful app helps you to combine the both worlds. So it helps you to get any ebook and transform it in an audiobook. And it's so amazing because you are seeing, seeing the text and it's highlighting the parts that the application is reading for you. So you can use audio when you, you prefer to use audio. You can switch to just reading by yourself or you can combine the two at the same time that the application is reading the book for you. You can make notes, you can highlight. So it's really, really good. So I like to use this when I uh, like to do a deep dive on a book. A lot of times, if I like the audiobook, I purchase the same book, yes, again, <laughs> in ebook form, and then use this tool to extract the most value of it. So give it a shot. The app is uh, called it a uh, voice dream. I think it's going to be a game changer for you. And let me know if you want me to do a full video just talking about it. For continue, please, if you are liking this content, the video, the reading 2.0 framework, don't forget to subscribe. Click that little button. To be honest, that will be really meaningful for me, especially in this uh, early stage of my channel. That will help me to understand that you are liking the content. And I promise that I will return value back to you in the form of new videos. All right, so let's do a deep dive into the next part of my reading framework. And it's about how to capture information and what I call wisdom nuggets. So now when it comes to audiobooks, it can be a little bit tricky to take notes because you are listening to the material and not being able to physically like highlighting parts of it. So I understand that and this is my recommendation. First, I use the Audible app in my phone in order to mark any part of the book that I like it, that catch my attention. There is a simple bookmark button that you can click on it and it's quick and easy and that's it. I normally, it has the option to add notes and details, but normally I don't do it. The important thing is that I mark that in that part of the audiobook is something important for me. The most of the times that's more than enough. If I come across with some piece of content of information that is actionable, that is really useful for me at that specific moment, then what I do is I stop the audio and quickly switch and create a note in the draft apps. 
You can use any type of application, but what I like about that one is that as soon as you open it, it has a blank uh, Kanban when I'm ready to type really fast. So I will grow a quick note about what I'm listening. I sometimes I go back and listen the audio once to enrich my note, and I will be ensuring to process that note at the end of my day because it's part of my to-do. And then here is when interesting things uh, can happen. So when it starts to get in uh, really exciting because every once in a while, you will find or you will come across with a book that you only you don't only want to uh, read it, but you want to study it. So with that, I mean, uh, I'm talking about highlighting, making notes, really like digging deep in the into the material. And when that happens, even if I already have the audiobook, what I like to do is to purchase the ebook version too. That shows how valuable is that information for me. So normally, when I buy the ebook version, then I will start consuming it uh, using the Voice Dream app so I can listen, read, highlight, making notes. At the end, the final lo- uh, notes will look like this text document with the title of the book. All, I enlist all the chapters of the books and inside of each of the chapters, I will put the wisdom nuggets, right? So the parts that I like the most or the highlighting points that I want to store. I put this inside of my knowledge management system so I can use it a little time. What I like about the text and why I choose to go to the ebook version in order to study the material is because as soon as I have those notes and the book in text form, then I can access to that wisdom, to that material uh, later whenever I can. So I just click select search in my notes and then I can search for any term that has the value back whenever I need it. Okay, so let's talk about the last part of the Reading 2.0 framework, when to read. And let me tell you, here is when we are going to put the framework in action and gets really interesting. So now, when I think about reading, I always uh, imagine like this perfect setup when you have like uh, this dedicated sofa, a good light, a good cup of coffee. So a total bliss, uh, right? But there is the thing, that type of setup never worked for me. Not once, not at all. Every time that I try it, I'm, I ended up uh, getting like sleepy, no matter the type of book that I'm reading. So what's the solution? For me, the solution is multitasking, my friends. Yes, you hear me right, multitasking. So for me, multitasking is the best way, uh, the best strategy for consuming books. And here are some examples on how I did it uh, last week. I Here I'm reading, like dri- driving back and forth uh, from my kids' school. Here is uh, also I'm, dri- I'm reading while I'm waiting in the doctor's office. That was like 25 minutes. Here I'm reading while doing some grocery shopping, right? So while just walking with the cart. And here is why when I read also when I'm just uh, walking on my dog. But the real kicker for me, uh, my favorite uh, part of a way to implement this framework is well, uh, while I'm doing uh, exercise. I just do some walking or running, but whatever type of exercise you do, you name it, here is when you can listen a lot of books. So this give me, in my case, 40 minutes every day of reading time. Trust me, that's a lot. The key here is to finding a second activity that you have to do anyway that doesn't require a lot of brain power and that you don't find particularly valuable or engaging, right? So for example, in my case, uh, I understand that exercise is, is a good thing, but I hate to do it. Adding the listening to book on, on, on top of them transform that activity in something that uh, becomes really valuable for me, okay? So let me tell you, there is no other feeling as good as the sense of accomplishment that you get when you knock it out your daily goal of reading at the same time that you finish some activities that you will normally consider that are like waste of time. So 
multitasking is the key. So there you have it, folks, Agile Fellows. That's how I choose when to read by multitasking and making the most of my time, okay? That was Reading 2.0 Framework. No shame, no guilt, just read more. And remember that you cannot read the book that you don't have. Doesn't matter the format, if it's an audiobook, an ebook, or a combination of them, I strongly suggest to transform boring activities into valuable ones by learning something new. Don't forget to hit the like button to subscribe to the channel and for more tips and tricks on how to maximize your productivity and take your life to the next level.